This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional, and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. And today we're gonna to talk about bees, uh, specifically bee stings and which bee sting is the most painful. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to the channel. So this is only gonna be a pain threshold on what I can deal with as far as pain. Uh, my wife claims that I'm a big baby and that I complain about everything, the littlest thing, I hate it. I don't, I don't like pain. And I agree. I don't. So we're going to talk about four specific bees. Uh, maybe five. Actually, we'll go over five. We'll go over five different bees today. We're going to go over European hornet, which is what everyone calls a bell hornet. We're going to go over uh, bald-faced hornets, yellow jackets. Now, those are your three hornets. And then we're going to talk about uh, wasps. And we're going to talk about honeybees. So these are the things that I've been stung by. Uh, I typically don't get stung on the job. Usually I get stung when I'm at home doing something stupid. But uh, I've been stung a couple times on the job, but mostly I get stung at home. And I've been stung by every single one of these bees uh, at least once. So I know there's other videos like this on YouTube. You can go through and you can find them. There's bee experts and stuff. And, they go all into the science and they talk about the venom and the amount of poison that's injected into your body by the bees and all this stuff. And I'm not going to go over that. I'm not going to get that complicated. I'm just going to try to explain to you what people have asked me, what hurts the worst? Because, you know, when it's all said and done, that's what you're concerned with. You know, the reason you don't want to get stung is because it hurts. So first, I'm going to go over probably the least painful sting, other than a sweat bee, which honestly really doesn't hurt that bad. Um, probably the next up from a sweat bee would be a yellow jacket. Now that may surprise you. That may be, wow, yellow jackets, really? Shoot, my brother was out there, he got stung 20 times. Or, you know, so-and-so was out mowing the grass, man, they went up his shorts, wouldn't leave him alone, got stung over 50 times by yellow jackets. It was awful, I had to go to the hospital, get a cortisone shot, all kinds of stuff. You know, these are the stories you hear about yellow jackets. Yellow jackets are probably the most prone to sting you the most times. So you get into a nest of yellow jackets, whether they're in the ground or up high, and they just sting you and they will not leave you alone. This is the only thing about yellow jackets that typically makes them worse than other bees because you're not just getting stung once, you're getting stung 10, 15, 20 times, 30 times, you know, some people have been stung over 50 times by a nest of yellow jackets. And that's really painful when you talk about the multitude of stings. But the reason I put yellow jackets at the very bottom of the list is because compared to other things that have stung me, yellow jackets are pretty tame. Yes, it hurts. But honestly, so I'll tell you a story. I was out mowing the grass one day for my father. Now, my father has uh, grapes. He's got grapes growing on a grapevine. And I was mowing underneath the grapevine. And I could have swore I was getting pricked by like rose prickers. But what had happened was there was a nest, a big bell hornet nest, the yellow jackets right there at my head level. And I, when I realized it was yellow jackets stinging me, I got off of the mower and I ran, you know, I went and took a shower, washed off whatever bees were left on me. And you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. I, I swole up for maybe a day. All the bites got looked like mosquito bites. And, you know, they kind of went away and I was all right after that. You know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yes, I got stung like 20 some times. But as far as the pain threshold, it really didn't hurt that bad. It really didn't. It wasn't as bad as some of the other things. And I'm going to go over the worst thing I've ever received. And trust me, when you hear about it, you're never going to want to get stung. But Nobody wants to get stung anyway. Nobody even wants to sweat me to bite them, but it happens. So the second the second on this list of five things to sting you would be uh, probably a red wasp, yellow wasp. 
Uh, in fact, yellow wasps a lot of times will get mistaken for yellow jackets, but they're longer and they're a wasp. They're not really a hornet. And they hurt pretty bad too. Uh, but still on a scale of one to 10, a yellow jacket will be probably about a three and a wasp will be about a four. So they don't, they don't create a lot of pain, but you'll have a worse reaction. At least I have a worse reaction. When I get stung, I got stung one time by a red wasp on my ear, right on the back of my ear. Because what happened is I was going underneath a deck to treat for termites. And when I went under the deck, there was a, there was a, nest, of hor uh, there was a nest of red wasps right above my head. And they fell down and they attacked me. And they got on the back of my ear and I got stung three or four times. And that was really painful uh, because I had multiple stings. It's the only time I've ever really been stung by a red wasp. But they typically don't sting. They, they're pretty mild. But because I was so close to them, they came out and they stung me. So keep that in mind. If you keep your distance from these things, usually you won't get stung. You know, most of the time when people get stung by yellow jackets, it's, it's because they accidentally either mow over them or they go after them with a gas can or something and they think they're going to kill them and then they end up getting stung. In fact, I've got videos I just recently did in my, in my shorts on YouTube shorts where you can go in and you can watch them. And you can see how to get rid of yellow jackets effectively without getting stung. Because I wear, I mean, what you see is what you get. That's what I wear when I go after a nest of yellow jackets. And I don't ever get stung. I don't wear a bee suit. I don't wear a helmet. I don't go out. I'm not scared of them. And I, I attack them with, with a duster. And I usually get rid of them pretty easily. In fact, I have a section on my Amazon Amazon store that if you go check that, it uh, it's actually got a bee section where you can go and you can check the bee uh, you know, what, what, what to use on wasp and hornets and different things like that. So if that's something that interests you and you are interested in getting rid of your wasp and hornets, then on your own, then do it right. Don't do it the wrong way. So, uh, the third on the list, um, now, now, now we're getting into, uh, higher pain level. Uh, probably the third on the list would be a honeybee. So honeybees are right in the middle between, uh, you know, your, your, uh, yellow jackets, and your, your, your more worse hornet breeds. Uh, and it's not a surprise that the top two on my list are hornets, but uh, honeybees. Now, people will, people will look at you and they're like, what do you mean honeybees? I always hear honeybees don't sting unless you are aggressive to the nest, unless you're going after them and bothering them. Well, you know, honeybees build their nests in walls. They don't just build their nest in trees and they don't just build their nests in those nice little pretty bee boxes that people use to get honey. They They'll go up inside a wall void and they'll, they'll start packing the wall full of honey. In fact, yesterday I was conversing with a lady. She said she had a nest of bees one time in her ceiling that was so severe that the, uh, they actually caused the ceiling to collapse in her, in her uh, kitchen because the honey and the honeycomb was all stuffed up in there and it was just so heavy that it eventually caused the entire sheetrock to come down and the whole kitchen was full of honeybees and, of course, honey all over the place. And it was a mess. And if you try to kill a nest of honeybees, what happens is they get very aggressive. It's the only time honeybees usually get aggressive unless they're Africanized honeybees. And if they're Africanized honeybees, they act just like European hornets or yellow jackets. And they'll come after you and they'll sting you over and over and over again, just like yellow jackets. But uh, honeybees themselves, what will happen, and this is the only time I've ever been stung on the job, uh, by honeybees. In fact, it's the only time I've ever been stung by honeybees. Uh, I was performing a job for a lady out in Roanoke uh, City, and she had, I, I had my son, and my son Rory, he's sitting right here, right beside me. He's listening to everything I say, but uh, he actually went with me on this job. It's one of the first jobs uh, my son ever went with me on ever. He was eight years old, I think, maybe maybe nine, when uh, when we did this job, and I told him, I said, well, Rory, we got to go out and do a honeybee nest. Now, you got to understand, most of the time, I just send a beekeeper over there and let them get the bees, and they'll take them and they'll make, a, make honey out, you know, get them to make honey for them. But the beekeepers had already come back and they said, look, you can't get the bees. There's no way to get the bees without tearing the lady's house up, and she can't afford to repair it, so uh, you're going to have to go over and you're going to have to kill these honeybees. So I went over there, and to my dismay, the, the lady had already emptied about three cans of wasp and hornet spray on this nest of honeybees and so they were already very agitated very angry and i didn't get even within 10 feet of the nest before the bees started coming out and stinging me and uh, i ran all the way back to my truck a good probably 20 30 yards away the bees chased me all the way to my truck and when i got in the truck they were actually tinging off the windows trying to get in the truck 
you know, banging like this, like they could get in, like they could get after me. They, uh, they were very angry because somebody had gone out there and tried a bunch of wasp hornets uh, spray on them. And that's not what I recommend for the destruction of a bee nest or a hornet nest or, you know, any kind of wasp nest or anything. I don't recommend any kind of uh, aerosol spraying of these types of nests because you're just going to make them really angry and they're going to sting you and it's going to be miserable. And I wasn't the only one that was stung. Actually, the lady's son who had emptied out the three cans of hornet spray on them, he got stung all up too. And so typically what I would recommend you do is on one of my videos already is dust them with a duster, get out in there, put your hand in the nest and dust them up. And they usually don't sting you. I've never been stung by honeybees on the job when I was able to get at them and no one had done anything prior to me getting there. So that's what I did. And it worked really well. That's what I've always done. In fact, I do have a nest of uh, honeybees on my channel. If you'll go through and find it. Uh, I actually did eliminate that nest of bees using dust, and they were all gone within a day, the whole hive. So uh, it's not that hard to get rid of honeybees, and you don't have to worry about them stinging you if you can uh, approach them correctly. So that's on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, that's about a 5 on the, on the pain threshold. Now, number 2 on the list, and the only reason this is number 2 on the list is because I'm allergic, is uh, bald-faced hornets. So a bald-faced hornet is kind of like a yellow jacket. They're, they're a bill hornet. Just I mean, so you have European hornets, uh, bald face hornets, and yellow jackets. All three of these are bell hornets. They make a nest, a bell-shaped nest, and that's why they call them bell hornets. So typically a bald faced hornet, they don't usually go in the wall. They can, not usually. Usually they make a soccer ball sized nest up high in a tree or in a bush, and they're black and white. They're a black and white hornet kind of look a little bit like a mix between a uh, bumblebee and a hornet. So, because they're like the black and white face, they're not, they're not yellow, they're black and white. So this, it, this is a story I'm going to tell you. And, and I've, I've gone over this before, but I got stung in the forehead by a bell hornet. And I couldn't open my eyes for two days. It was pretty miserable. I had an extreme allergic reaction. Uh, anytime I get stung by bell hornets, like a, like the ball face hornet, the, the the bald face hornet specifically, there's something about the venom in a bald face hornet sting that just does not agree with me. It doesn't agree with me, and it doesn't agree with my father either. There have been instances where I was stung on the wrist, and I couldn't even squeeze my hand shut for days because I had such a severe allergic reaction to the... Now, I don't have to have an EpiPen. I don't have to have Benadryl handy or anything like that to, to stop the allergic reaction. It's just that's the way I react. I get real puffy, real swollen at the injection site. And it causes me, uh, it causes me a lot of issues being able to use whatever extremities. Like I said, I got stung on the face, and I wasn't able to open my eyes because my entire face swole all up. And I'll include a picture here so you can see what it looks like. But I swole up really bad, couldn't see at all. And then the uh, the time I was stung on the arm, I couldn't even close my hand. I couldn't even close my elbow. So I like like you know, where a normal field of motion, my arm was just stuck like this. I couldn't even close my arm at all because uh, my elbow was so swollen that when I tried to close, it just stretched the skin so bad. It hurt too bad to even close my arm. And so that's the only two times I've ever been stung by ball face hornet. And each time I had a very severe reaction. And I've heard of other people that have said the same thing. Yellow jackets don't affect them. Ball face hornets absolutely are something that they do not like to get stung by because of the, it's not the pain, it's the prolonged problem after you've been stung. And so on a scale of 1 to 10, on a bald-faced hornet, I'd have to give it probably about a 7 or 8 as far as pain. And not only that, but longevity of symptoms last, for me personally, way longer with bald-faced hornets. Does that make me afraid to deal with them? No. In fact, if I got called on a bald-faced hornet job right now, I'd go out and I'd kill the bald-faced hornets. I don't have any problem killing them. If I get stung, I get stung. It's part of the job. I'm in a risk, a high-risk profession, you could say. And so I just have to accept the fact that I might have to get stung every now and then. But I haven't been stung by a ball-faced hornet in over five years, and I don't plan to get stung again anytime soon. So hopefully we get to number one, talk about the number one, uh, and that is European hornets, or what other people have deemed as the bell hornet. When anybody ever talks about having a nest of bell hornets, this is the bug they talk about. It's a very large hornet. It is about two to three times the size of a wasp. 
which is what we talked about first, the red wasp, or not necessarily first, but second. It was the second one on the list was a wasp. But uh, it's right up there with the most, it is the most painful thing that has ever happened to me as an exterminator. Um, and it wasn't on the job. I've never been stung by a bill hornet on the job, like the European hornet. I've been stung by yellow jackets on the job. I've been stung by honeybees on the job. I've been stung by ball-faced hornets and wasps on the job. But I've never been stung by a European hornet on the job. I've dealt with a lot of nests, never been stung. The way I got stung was I used to live in a 76 mobile home. It was a single wide and it had storm windows on every window. And I was probably about 20, I think I was like 20 or 21 when this happened to me. And I, I had to go. So the... The window, the hornet was between the storm window and the regular window. So if you understand what I'm saying, when I opened, now it was nice and cool outside. It was starting to get cool in the fall. So I was like, well, I'm going to open the window and let the air blow through. And I didn't think about this hornet being in the window. So I opened my storm windows and let the breeze come through, turn the ceiling fan on, got a nice circulation in. It was really nice. And I was walking across my living room floor. And lo and behold, I stepped on that European hornet. And oh my goodness, it hurt so bad. I cried. I mean, I don't really, I mean, yeah, my wife jokes about how I can't handle pain. I typically don't cry from it unless it really hurts. And it really, really hurt. It felt like I had stepped on a knife blade, an open knife blade in the floor. And I actually thought I had cut myself. I actually thought I had stepped on a knife. And when I pulled my foot up and I wasn't bleeding, like profusely bleeding from my foot because it felt like I had stepped on a knife blade, I, uh, I noticed that the hornet was there in the floor dead because I stepped on it. And so I killed the hornet. He died, but he stung me on his way out. So he got me. But the, the amount of swelling that I incurred after this, this thing, was I had to actually wrap my foot in an ACE bandage for two weeks just to keep the swelling down so I could put my boot on because my boot would not go on my foot. My foot was swollen so severely that I could not put my shoe on to work. I mean, I could work. I could walk. It wasn't like I couldn't walk. I hobbled around and it was sore on my ankle because it was hard for my foot to kind of move and, and at the joints because the, the, the fatty layers and the tissue was so swollen. I was having such a severe reaction that I had a really hard time putting my shoes on. And I also had a really hard time making my footwork the way I wanted it to, too, because all the joints were swollen. But it hurt. I mean, it, it didn't just hurt when I got stung. It hurt for weeks. It hurt for at least eight or nine days, just like I had been stung that day, every single day. I got sick to my stomach. I got, I mean, just from the pain alone, I got severely sick. From, I threw up and everything. I mean, I not to be gory or specific on anything, but I got really ill off of this bite. And I might be allergic. Uh, I know I'm allergic. It's at least from, from actual, you know, injection site irritation. I do have that. Absolutely. Absolutely allergic there. But uh, as far as actual, you know, sickness, I may actually be a little allergic to the European hornet, but it was so painful. Uh, actually, my sister had stepped on one of these bees when she was young. She was maybe four or five years old, and she'll still remember it to this day. She will tell you it is the most miserable sting she has ever received. It's made her terrified of any bees, hornets, wasps, anything that flies, that stings. She is terrified because of what happened to her when she was little, and I absolutely feel her pain, and anyone out there that's ever been stung by a European hornet. Scale of one to 10, it's like a 15. I mean, it's way up there. It is miserable. So hopefully this video has helped you understand bee stings. Hopefully it's given you some insight on what to avoid. Avoid them all. Don't get stung. And follow my video advice that I've got on my other videos on how to actually eliminate these problems on your own and not get stung, like me. You guys have a real great day. I really appreciate it. And thank you for listening to my rambling on for 20 minutes now. Y'all have a great day and I will see you. Don't forget Thursday nights live 
on uh, YouTube. We do live streams every Thursday night where you can come in and ask me any questions. We can talk about my bee stings if you want. And uh, I'll see you then. Y'all have a great day, great night, great time, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I hope you're enjoying life to the fullest. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.